Hello, welcome to Tim Anderson Horse Training. In the 25 or so plus years that I've trained horses, I've had a lot of horses come in with a whole bunch of different types of issues that I've had to work on fixing. And a lot of those issues have been problems that the owners had unintentionally created. So that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to tell you about the eight most common problems that owners unintentionally create. So let's get started. So the first issue that I want to talk about that I see owners create unintentionally is not creating a separation of work from play. And by that I mean when you get your horse out and you start with him like I put him in the cross ties here. The horse always knows whether we're going to go to work or whether we're going to play. If this is a, a work activity or a non-work activity. Imagine if you got in your car every morning not knowing if you were going to go to work or if you were going to go on vacation. And you're not going to know that until you get to your destination. If you know you're going to work, you can kind of think about things in your mind, how your day is going to go, how you're going to start your morning, how your day is going to progress. If you're going on vacation, you're going to start getting excited about going on vacation. Your mind doesn't know what direction to go in. If you don't create a separation of work from play with your horse, your horse doesn't know what mindset to be in. Right now he's in the mindset that he knows this is work. The, the routine that I just went through is the routine, okay, we're going to go to work today, we're going to ride today. It really doesn't matter what your routine is, but you need to have a certain routine to let your horse know this is a work day, this is a work activity, and a different routine to let your horse know this is a play day, an off day or a grooming day or spa day, it, it, whatever that is. Separate work from home so that your horse knows what mindset he needs to be in. Okay, so the second problem that I want to talk about that I see owners unintentionally create is, it, it kind of stems off of the first problem, is they get the horse out and they give the horse a spa treatment before they go ride. You want to brush your horse before you ride him. You want to get the dirt off of him. You want him clean. You want him nice looking. But imagine if you go and spend a couple of hours at the spa getting whatever people get done at the spa and then after that you got to go run a marathon. You're not going to mentally be in a place where you can go run that marathon and, and and really do good. That's not where your mental state is going to be. I spend a whole bunch of time grooming him, giving him a spa day, brushing him, bathing him. Now you do need to brush. I'm not saying don't brush your horse, but I'm saying let your horse know we're going to ride or if it's a spa day. When I'm going to ride, I will brush the horse, I'll detangle the mane, I'll put the tail up, I'll do everything to let the horse know we're going to be worked, but if I'm going to do anything more intense than that, let's say I'm going to condition his mane, or put, or do a bunch of work on his mane, or I'm going to do any sort of treatment on his legs, any ice therapy or anything like that, I'm not going to do that and then go ride. I'm going to want the horse to have his mindset on we're going to go work and I'm not going to give him a big lengthy, a lengthy grooming. I'm still going to groom him, but I'm not going to give him a big lengthy grooming before we work. Okay, so the third thing I want to talk about is an owner giving their horse treats before they ride. Give those treats after you ride as a reward. Uh, don't start rewarding him before you've done the work. Ask him to do whatever the job is for that day, and then if you want to give treats, give them afterwards. Don't give them before. Okay, so the number four issue 
that I see owners unintentionally create with their horses is they go long times before doing long rides. So if I get this horse out and I ride him for four hours today on a long trail ride or something, and then I put him out in the pasture and then I wait a month and then I do another long ride on him, that's not very fair to the horse. That's going to create soreness issues. That's going to create just all kind of issues with him. He's going to start dreading when you do work him because he's not fit. He's not fit physically. He's not fit mentally. So don't do long rides with long time spans in between. You can ride him for four hours one day and then do a bunch of short rides and then do another long ride later. Don't let him stand in between those long rides not having any work. If you were to ride him for four hours and after that ride, over the next several days, you do a bunch of grooming, you do spot treatments, you reward him, and you don't ride him again for another month, that's going to create problems. It's going to create physical problems. He's not going to be physically fit. He's going to be sore from the ride. And he's also not going to be mentally fit and ready for those rides either. Okay, so the number five mistake that I see a lot of owners unintentionally create is a lack of structure. Horses like structure, they do well on structure, and exactly how you plan out your interaction with your horse doesn't really matter, but it needs to be structured. And you need to think of like um, a classroom situation. Every time you work this horse, every time you interact with this horse, you're teaching this horse something. You might be teaching it something good, you might be teaching it something bad. You want to do your best to always, always teach something good. Put some thought into how you're interacting with your horse. Think, can I do a better job of these interactions being more structured and more productive? And by productive, I don't necessarily mean work. I mean productive for the mental state of the horse. Because if you can maintain a good mental state of your horse, everything else is going to be easier. If the horse don't ever know what's coming next, he don't know what to anticipate, then you're setting your horse up where he's in an unstructured situation and things are going to be a lot harder for him to handle as they come. Okay, so number six on the list of things that I've seen owners do to unintentionally create problems with their horse is being indecisive and lacking confidence. Uh, to me, those two kind of go together. If you don't have the confidence, it's hard to make a decision. But the other side of that is, I heard a long time ago, and to me it, it holds true, the worst decision you can make is no decision at all. So even though you might not have the confidence to make what you believe is the right decision, make a decision. And if it's the wrong decision, you can learn from that. And you need to keep yourself safe. You don't need to make what you know is a bad decision. But let's say, for instance, you go to pick your horse's foot up, and he won't pick it up. So you have a couple of options there. There's several things that you can do. Uh, you might just you might lose your temper and slap him, which I don't think is the right thing to do. But that is a, an action, and you can learn from that action, even though it's the wrong thing to do. You you can learn from your mistakes, but you can't learn from not doing anything. That that's my point. And you might try something to get him to put his foot up. It works great. If it don't work, try something else. And even if you're not confident, even if you don't have the confidence to tell yourself this is the answer to make that horse pick his foot up, make a decision. Try something. If it works, great. If it don't, you've learned from it. So that's a big mistake I see. People not having the confidence and being indecisive. Okay, so number seven on things that I see horses or owners do that unintentionally creates problems with the horse is have improper fitting tack. 
And in most cases, it, it's not intentional. The owner doesn't just doesn't realize that it doesn't fit correctly. And that's what has created the problem. So in this situation, the best thing you can do is educate yourself on what is a proper fitting saddle? What is a proper place for the girth to sit? Where should the back girth be? So educate yourself on how the, the tack should be. I see so many bridles put, so many bits put in a bridle incorrectly. Curb straps attached down here instead of up here when there's a ring down here. And all of those things will create problems and the owner just, just doesn't know. Just, you just need to educate themselves. So that's number seven. Educate yourself on what is correct fitting tack. The last one I want to talk about, number eight on the list of ways owners have unintentionally created problems, and that is not by not having a good health management program for your horse. You don't, you're not getting the correct nutrition into your horse. You're doing things that are creating stomach ulcers. You're not providing enough hay. And all of those things is just, it's not intentional. It's just the owner not being educated. And work on educating yourself on what is correct nutrition. And things like foot care. Make sure your horses are on uh, ongoing hoof management. That your ho horses are getting their feet trimmed by a reputable farrier so that you're getting proper hoof care. You have them on a, a proper warming schedule and have just maintain their health. And if you're not maintaining your health, you're going to create other problems. You're going to create soreness in the horse. You're going to create stomach issues. You're going to create hoof issues. Maintain a proper health management plan and that'll keep your horse happier, healthier. That's the eight problems that I see most often that owners unintentionally create. Let me know in the comments below if, if, you've, if you think of some more. Um, I'm sure that's not all of them. That's just the, the eight that it seems like I see the most often. Until next time, thank you for watching.